Josh Green here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Sonny Edwards, Media Day down here in Kensington. How are you doing, Sonny? Yeah, I'm fantastic, thank you. Thank you for coming down. Um, yeah, really good. Yeah, you're looking sharp in there. You were saying earlier you've, you're taking this camp really seriously. Is this the most focused you've been for a fight in a long while? Ever. Ever. I'll be real. I've done everything well within myself. I'm talking takeaways in camp. I'm talking no supplement. Like I'm talking do whatever I want, really. But this one, I'm doing it proper. What changes in your life and in your motivation when you've got a fight in the line like this one? So uh, I can't hear myself think. You know what it is? It's more... It's just more excitement, you know? Like, when the fans are excited about a fight, it will tick the same boxes that will excite me because I'm a boxing fan as well as someone that really wants to leave their mark. So, the biggest events are the ones I want, naturally. So, it's good that our visions align. Like, I'll be real. I don't really box for money. I live a good life. I boxed when it was for free for 10 years. I boxed when it was nothing but a bill to my father and enjoyed it. I tried quitting when I was 14 and found my way back because I couldn't. I, you know, I couldn't. I couldn't get away from the, like, the feeling of needing sparring. I started fighting in the streets for the first time and with my friends for the first time in my life just because I was an angry little kid that didn't realise what was going through his head. Found boxing again. I'm addicted to it. I would be doing this whether there was no cameras in front of me, whether there was no money in the bank. So I'm here. I just want the big events to really get up for that really, like, you know, get my talent celebrated maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I just want to be part of the big event. Why do I want to walk into a half-empty crowd? I want to walk into 10,000 people, have a look around it. Like, I've put this event together with me being the centre of it. Not being on an undercard, not being an entree, not being fucking the commentary or, or, or presenter. No, in the ring, big event, big night of boxing that'll go down. That's for me, though. That's for me and my memories. And so my son can be, my sons, uh, sorry, can look up to me and be proud of their dad. Because right now I'm like a superhero to them. That's the only thing I care about. I don't care about money. I don't care about fame. I don't care about walking across the street and people asking me for a picture or offering me free food in a, in a restaurant. I don't care about any of that. Just give me a competitive fight that I can train for and actually feel like there's some threat getting in the ring. Bam gives me that. Fantastic. Campos didn't really. I knew I could beat him. So I, I trained like I knew I could beat him. Cam, uh, Bam, I know I can beat. But I will need to be a great version of myself to beat because he's a great fighter. He's shown that, he's proven that, and everyone believes him to be so. So I'm going to put him on a pedestal, even past what everyone else is putting him. A pedestal above that because that will bring the best out of me. My diet is great. I just put a whole, spent thousands, no, no, tens of thousands, taking away 15 lads, 16 lads and, and ladies. Uh, nutritionist, SNC, trainer, trainer, sparring partner, sparring partner, sparring partner, massive villa, like two weeks, took everyone away before, before I went on a 10 day media tour, before, getting ready for this fight and then when I get back from Sheffield I'm here, we're going to plan out home, we're going to do the last seat, we've got all our vision, like, nothing, no stone unturned, I'm taking this properly, why? Because right now I'm excited to be that, pop, that boxer in the movie that's doing the training montage, that's in the gym doing the extra rounds. I don't know I can beat these guys, oh, we'll call it a day to day. Nah, I've had enough, you know what I mean? We can do that, why not? Because I still get in there and beat them. I'm doing it within myself, but now you're getting the full version of me. I'll be real. Some people will go, oh, why aren't you doing that every time? You cannot go for a boxing career and want 10, 15 years and apply yourself the same way in every, every camp. Because when you do a camp like this, you lose a bit of yourself in the ring. People that don't box won't get that. When you go for a camp like this and for a fight like this, even if it all goes to plan, but you will lose a bit of yourself in the ring. All those rounds, those extra rounds, those harder round sparring, those bigger sparring partners, those bigger punches, the threat, flying people in, everything a bit more serious, a bit more longer, a bit more harder. Heat, temperature, I'm, I've been in 14 rounds in 31 degree, hot gyms, no fan, no air con, nothing. What do you think's gonna happen? I can't do this every single time. I'm getting ready for war, this is really going to war. The other ones are battles, they're getting there. They're getting coming through, but this is the war now. This is where you walk through the pearly gates and then we'll see where we are next. It's interesting what you say about Bam there, that you put him on a pedestal and you think he's a, a good, good fighter. Is there respect there between yourself and Bam? A great level of respect, but the more I respect my fighter's ability, the better you get a version of me. The more professional I'm in camp, the more switched on I am in the ring, in the build up, in the fight, more careful of what I'm saying, more meticulous, more careful of the, the, the angles we're attaching things, everything. I'm more switched on. I care about what kit I'm wearing. 
right now. Ask my kit makers on my gloves. You know the fights I don't really care about? I don't even care what kit I'm wearing. It's a last minute job. It's whole different. I've been thinking about it and planning and envisioning like this is what gets my juices flowing, my creative juices for the boxing ring. Because the canvas is my piece of art. That's my art in there. And you know, that 12 rounds, that 36 minutes, however long it lasts, that's my body of work to put into the rest of the world to say, look, here's me as a fighter, remember me. You talked earlier about 14 year old self wanting to walk away, but not being able to do so. Did that 14 year old Sonny Edwards imagine that this would be where he was however many years later no the 14 year old me did walk away for seven months um you know started drinking alcohol smoking weed and and lost my virginity you know what i mean it was a hell of a time but by the end of summer i knew that i wanted to go back to fighting um i was desperate to get back in the boxing ring desperate i was telling my mates who bear in mind i could go anywhere and do anything i wanted at this time I was telling my mates, oh, my mum's not letting me out just to not go out and stay and play video games. I turned the corner, got back in contact with my dad for the first time in that whole seven months. Yo, dad, we're starting the boxing again and started. Boom. Took my own charge of my own career from that time. I said to my dad, if I'm going back, I'm training at Repton, where I used to spar, but I wasn't allowed to box for that. I weren't boxing for that, whatever. Took my own career from then. I've taken it ever since. So, yeah, from 14 years old, just before I turned 15, I knew I was destined for great things. My brother always showed levels, always showed levels. I, at that point, was toying with the idea, do I want to be something else? Do I want to do something different? Do I want to be like everyone else? And for, you know, a summer it was nice to be like everyone else, that freedom, eat what you want whenever you want, do what you want whenever you want. Yeah, I got in, I'd already been institutionalized. Five, uh, age nine to 14, boxing had institutionalized me, so I'm gonna be here to the end of my days, I'll be real. After you stop asking me questions about my fighting, you'll probably be asking me questions about fighters and manage. After that, you should probably do that already now. After that, you can ask me about tra uh, fighters and manage, uh, training, and then after that, probably shows I'm promoting. I'll be in boxing, like, you ask me my goal, it's not to win this world title, or that many, or this one, or the, the accolade, pound, pound, none of that. It's to be able to stay in boxing for the rest of my life and feel like I've never worked a day in it. That's my, that's my goal, and so far, it's kind of good. Um, Matchroom obviously work with Bam Rodriguez as well as yourself. Do you believe you've got the full backing of Matchroom in this fight? I genuinely think it's a bit more 50-50, but at the same time, I'll be real. If I was a promoter, right? If I was a promoter and the best promoter in the world that cares about events being built, entertainment, etc. All of that, okay, yeah, Bam is a very exciting fighter, but only when he gets in the ring, like... And you have someone that is making sure that even with the quietest opponent in the world, we're still getting them out. You know, when that table tennis game happened, that one a matchroom set up, that one, that one, oh, yeah, we'll plan to meet by the pool at one o'clock. No, I was sat on the other side with a mojito in my hand, passion fruit mojito in my hand, and I heard whispers, ah, oh, Pam Rodriguez, the champ on tennis. He was on the table. Already, I heard about it. I've got up, went over. I got next. Anyone? Next? I got next. He won. We played each other. You know, cameras just swarmed round. I didn't even know that. You know what I mean? But that's the reality of it. So, you know, if I was the world best boxing promoter, I know who's the sure investment, and also I'm the easy one to make a fight with. Eddie's made no secret of that. Cause the name actually don't matter. The opponent don't matter. Cause they're all gonna look good. They're all gonna look scary. They've all got knockouts. They've all got wins. I, I, they wouldn't see me otherwise. They all look good, so it doesn't matter. His name, his name, his name. There's one fighter that stands out above the rest. Chocolatito. If it's not him, you look all the same. World level fighters. But Chocolatito, because the market, Billy, he's like the, the mini Canelo at these weights. After I beat Bam, I want a million to fight him, and I'll take his head clean off as well. Is that the next logical step for you when you come through this fight? Metaphorically, obviously. He's a very tough bastard, so <laughs> I probably wouldn't take his head even like an inch back, but... I could definitely dance around him and have a little move, I reckon. But yeah, 100%. No, no, no. He was disrespectful in my eyes. It probably was just his social media manager. But he said, I'm easy work. I've never been easy work for anyone in my whole entire life. And that's on God. You can have stand on that. Never been easy work. Maybe not physically challenging, but mentally to us. You know what I mean? Kill, killing people, soul destroying, ruin their, derail their careers for years. Make them suffer imposter syndrome. Am I really that bad? Or did he just make me look that bad? Serious. Serious. Go back and look, man. Might not always look the most physically dominating but mentally come on Sonny Edwards thanks for your time as always thank you seconds out say hi to Danny Flexen for me